new Omni and Horizon cars are Chrysler Corporation's first domestically produced subcompact vehicles. They are also the first U.S. built subcompact cars to feature front wheel drive. There are plenty of other new features too. In the engine, in the chassis and suspension, in the body, and in the new front wheel drive transaxle and transmissions, which is an excellent place to start our story. The front wheels are each driven by drive shaft assemblies with constant velocity joints at each end. The inner joint is the sliding type called a tripode. The outer joint is the Rezepa type. The inner or tripode joints on both sides have three bearing surfaces which slide freely in a three grooved housing but which also transfer power to the drive shafts. The outer ends of the drive shafts where the drive angle can be extreme use the Rezepa joint a constant velocity type universal joint of ingenious design. The Rezeppa housing has six elongated grooves, which match six grooves in a second member. The balls lock the two parts together to provide the drive. Notice that the driving balls remain in the same plane no matter how the output shaft is positioned. Aside from keeping the joint boot secure and weatherproof, no maintenance of either joint is necessary. The left side drive shaft is shorter and is solid steel, while the longer right side shaft is tubular. The drive shaft assemblies are splined to the front wheel hubs. Differential operation for both the manual transmission and the automatic are the same. However, watch for a difference where the drive shafts attach. With the manual transmission, both drive shafts bolt to flanges on the differential case. In the automatic, the differential output shaft is integral with half of the inner constant velocity joint. This allows each drive shaft assembly to be pushed in rather than bolted on. In the actual assembly, the shaft is locked in place by a circlip, which is inserted with the shaft. The speedometer pinion gear is driven by teeth on the right-hand drive shaft in the automatic and by an internal drive on the right-hand output shaft in manual transmission cars. Incidentally, the automatic transmission has a conventional torque converter, which drives a three-speed planetary gearbox. You'll find two sumps on the automatic, one on the transmission and one on the differential. Both sumps use the same Dexron transmission fluid. The 1.7 liter Omni Horizon engine has a cast iron block, an aluminum head and a forged steel crankshaft with five main bearings. Die-cast aluminum housings with special seals are used for crankshaft oil sealing both front and rear. The oil pickup and oil pump are in one unit. An overhead camshaft drives the valve train with valve stem side thrust wear minimized by steel bucket type tappets on each valve. Case hardened steel discs are retained in the top of each tappet and serve as the cam lobe contact surface. Valve clearance adjustment is made by selecting the correct disc from a choice of 26, ranging in thickness from 3 millimeters to 4.25 millimeters. Both intake and exhaust valves operate in bronze valve guides with rubber seals held tight by circular springs. There are two chrome vanadium springs for each valve. A centered iron sprocket drives the timing belt. The timing belt also drives an accessory shaft, which in turn drives the distributor, the oil pump, and the fuel pump. Underhood serviceability is made easier by mounting the distributor, spark plugs, and oil filter on the front of the engine. There's a two-barrel carburetor mounted on the aluminum intake manifold with a rubber isolator. It's a brand new carburetor that's built like one half a four barrel and staged the same way. The first stage for part throttle operation opens only the primary barrel. In the second stage, the larger secondary begins to open so that both throttle blades arrive at wide open together. You'll find the familiar lean burn sensor devices, 
a throttle position transducer, and a carburetor switch. You'll also see a standard Chrysler built alternator. The starter is different, however. It's a straight through design rather than one having a reduction gear built in as on other corporate products. The starter end shaft for the manual transmission fits into a recess in the housing. All Omni and Horizon vehicles have Chrysler's new second generation spark control computer. This advanced design ignition system eliminates the need for an idle enrichment circuit, vacuum advance unit, centrifugal advance mechanism, or a starting pickup coil in the distributor. The distributor itself is different from what you've seen on other Chrysler Corporation engines. Instead of the familiar induction coil pickup, there's a semiconductor unit. Metallic shutters driven by the distributor shaft perform the make and break functions as they pass the semiconductor. A conventional coil and ballast resistor are used. There are new cooling system parts, including an electric fan controlled by a thermostat. The fan runs only when the coolant temperature gets above 76 degrees Celsius and goes off when the ignition switch is turned off. A diagnostic connector makes it simple for you to hook up Chrysler's new electronic engine performance analyzer. You'll be getting more information about this super brain box later. Horizon and Omni have a fully independent ISO strut front suspension system. A coil spring and shock absorbing strut are used at each front wheel, replacing the conventional upper control arms and upper ball joints. The struts are as durable as the springs and require no maintenance. An anti-roll bar is standard. The caster angle is built in at the factory and is not adjustable, but camber is adjusted by turning a cam between the steering knuckle and the ISO strut. Steering toe of 0.1 degree out is set by the usual tie rod adjustment. Rack and pinion steering is standard, with a power assist unit optional for added parking and handling ease. The rear suspension also offers independent action with the wheel spindles attached to two trailing arms mounted to the body with rubber pivot bushings. A cross member between the trailing arms provides anti-roll stabilization similar to the front roll bar. Vertical shock absorbing struts similar to those on the front suspension are rubber mounted to the body. The dual brake system is different in being diagonally balanced. That is, the left front and right rear brakes are part of one circuit and the other wheels are on another circuit. The front disc and rear drum brakes are conventional with power assist optional. There's a unique new feature for transverse engine cars in the exhaust system. It's a ball joint coupling at the exhaust manifold. The joint allows a limited motion, which contributes significantly to quieter vehicle operation. The exhaust pipe is stainless steel between the catalytic converter and the muffler, where exhaust gases are hottest. New molded rubber muffler and tailpipe hangers help isolate sounds and vibrations from the body. The all-welded construction of the Omni and Horizon bodies doesn't allow us much to say in the way of service. Because the bodies are assembled with welds rather than bolts and nuts, the cars are likely to stay as solid, tight, and quiet after thousands of miles as they are when new. An example of the highly accurate dimensional control of the Omni Horizon bodies is seen in the exceptional door fit quality, which allows the hinges to be welded in place. Servicing the instruments couldn't be simpler. Removing a plastic lens gives quick access to instruments and to the reminder and warning lights. Each of the instruments is easily removed from the front. A single control stalk operates the turn signals, high beam switch, and wiper and washer. The ignition lock is unique. The lock is placed conventionally on the steering column, but the ignition switch itself is placed farther down the column and operates through an interconnecting rod. Serviceability in the Omni and Horizon is a big story. But for now, let's just skim over the highlights of the unique serviceability features. The transverse engine mounting makes it easy to get to the spark plugs, to check the thermostat, and get to the fuel pump and distributor. The carburetor idle mixture and idle speed screws can be adjusted without removing the air cleaner. The two-piece timing belt cover may be removed completely or in parts for belt inspection or for belt tension adjustment.
There's nothing to prevent the quick removal of the engine oil pan on the car for checking the crankshaft bearings and seals and the oil pump. The master cylinder has a see-through plastic reservoir. Headlamps may be aligned without removing any trim or bezel. Bumpers are interchangeable front and rear. There's a convenient center point jacking pad at the extreme front. All locks may be serviced with the standard current Chrysler lock repair kits. The wiper motor is simple to get to and service. The grill is easy to remove and replace. And that's just the beginning. We're going to be looking at a lot more Omni Horizon service in the next two sessions. Next month, we'll cover service adjustments and the following month, we'll do the complete story on the transaxle. Don't miss them.